episode of Maximilian Must Know. Got a good one for you today, guys, from the House of Arquiste. We're going to take a look at one of their newer scents. This one is called the Architects Club. Uh, this was a house that really wasn't on my radar. I knew they had a scent um, that had like chocolate and cinnamon um, called Anima Dulcis that was on my checkout list, but I just never got around to it. So I was in Barney's one day and checked out some of the newer stuff Barney's had in, including this one and the, um, the three reissued Helmet Lang fragrances. And this one I sprayed on a strip and I just kept coming back to it after I left. I didn't try it on skin, but I decided to pull the trigger on it. And I want to say that I actually wound up purchasing this one from Twisted Lily in Brooklyn. Whenever I purchase a fragrance now and Twisted Lily has it, I'm going to get it from them. Um, I love Mint. I love Oswald. But I have bought about five bottles from, from Twisted Lily. I've gotten an average of eight samples each time. And I've gotten the fragrance the next business day almost every time and um, I really find their selection to be best best of all the niche niche um, fragrance stores right now. I do though like how the big four uh, stores, Aids of Anustis, Min, Oswald, and Twisted Lily all have brands that the others don't which makes them all very um, necessary and, 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 and thankful for all of them. Like Aids of Anustis has Byretto and Atelier, um, Min has their own house and Pure Distance, Os and Mansara, Oswald has Pro from Aroma and the Pierre Goyem scent. Twisted Lily has the entire Zerjoff line, um, Jardin de Cravon, Aritzi El Gran, um, Smell Bent, and they um, and they all have scents that are exclusive to their stores, and that's that's just awesome for me. So before we break into this one, let's talk Arquist quickly. This was a house established by a gentleman named Carlos Huber in New York City in 2011. Huber's fragrance philosophy is that a beautiful scent is like a beautiful memory. It transports us to another time and place. And I really get that and I really respect that. I think that smell really does take you places and especially places you've been before. And um, that's why I think I love fragrances so much is because the memories I associate with them, it's, it's just awesome awesome to smell something and remember something or smell something new and make a memory with that. So I love his philosophy. Huber is an architect and he's really invested in making sense that transport the wearer to evocative moments in history. And um, he's got a nice little collection now of about 11 fragrances. They work with some big names in the business to craft their, this, um, their sense. So like an example, they have a fragrance called Alexander, which is meant to smell like a Russian man in the 1830s. And a Medulcis is meant to smell like Mexico City in 1865. Boutonniere number no. seven is meant to smell like 1899 in Paris. So a little different than what Histoire de Parfum does. They're more about historical characters and this house is sort of more about time period. Um, Arquiste has also done a few fragrances with the designer J. Crew. Architects Club came out in 2014, made a lot of bloggers and reviewers best of the year list. And the idea behind this one is sundown at a hotel in London in 1930 and a bunch of architects gathering after work to have drinks and unwind. It's an eau de parfum in concentration and it comes only in one size, which is 100 ml. It costs $190. And the notes on this one are juniper berries, angelica, lemon, bitter orange, pepperwood, guyac wood, oak, vanilla and amber. Availability, as I said, Twisted Lily, Aids de Venustis, Oswald, Barney's all carry this house. Um, if you, let's take a look at presentation next up. So, box a little weird. Arkey's Perfumer, and then, well, let's take a look. You have on the bottom the notes um, and a lot of information. On the back, you have the um, a group of architects gathered for cocktails. Uh, as they settle in the dark wood, leather velvet, um, burst and frosted martinis, laughter, white smoke, and fine vanilla. And again, the notes um, developed with Jan Vosnier, who's the perfumer on this one. And then to actually hold the box in place, you have this... this um, rubbery material and inside you actually have like a little booklet about uh, other Arquise fragrances so um interesting <laughs> I mean I guess that's what I'd say about the box it's cool the bottle um is very round and thick and it doesn't really sit great on my shelf that's not their fault I just um I don't love round bottles like this because it does make them hard to display in shelves with other fragrances but it's a really nice bottle heavy glass sticker on the bottom heavy metal cap and a very nice atomizer and on the cap you have an A 
Yeah, you see all those fingerprints there, but so definitely cool presentation. I'm just not a, personally a fan of these bottle shapes. And so this one opens up with a really gorgeous and well-structured vanilla accord that is going to draw a shitload of people in, if not just for that opening. And the idea with the vanilla was the accompanying notes of juniper to make it smell like these architects were drinking ice cold martinis. And Arquise wanted to surround this vanilla with herbal notes. So you get the angelica, the bitter orange peel. Martinis were supposed to be dressed with a lemon twist. They are supposed to be dressed with a lemon twist. So you have the lemon note in there as well. So it's a bracing, almost cooling vanilla note with these gorgeous botanical notes really playing as support to that vanilla. You also get nice lemon at the top. But the problem for me with this scent is that that's really all that's there. I thought that this one just didn't evolve on the tester script because it wasn't skin. But in reality, this one never really gives you more than that beautiful top. As it dries down, it does become a woody, sort of ambery vanilla, but it never comes close to surpassing or even meeting the opening in terms of the remainder of the journey. And to me, I think that's a huge shame. I think the concept was really spot on and interesting, right? Let's make a scent that smells like a club where architect architects meet. And I get what they wanted to do, and that was make a vanilla martini-like fragrance, but there was an opportunity to build that on top of some other elements that might be in the club like leather chairs pipe or cigar smoke um, but to base it on a weak woody bottom I think was a big mistake now for me this fragrance is really saved by one of my favorite vanilla openings of all time but I think this could have been a top 10 scent for me um, and it did fall a little bit short there performance is also a bit of a struggle it never really matches the intensity of the notes that open up this fragrance and within a couple hours it does become a skin scent for me and at $190 and this being an eau de parfum I kind of find that unacceptable it's a very quiet fragrance and because of that it does have some ideal applications it's definitely a unisex Juice, but because of the connotations, I think it will do better with men, and it really is sort of non potent enough to pull off in any season, less really warmer summer days and nights. It'll do really well for you at work because of the quiet nature that it has. I think it's a little too soft for a good night out scent, but it could be a good romantic scent. If you can't get this one, can't afford it, you want something like this that's going to give you a little bit more, I would check out Sexiest Scent on the Planet Ever, IMHO, by 4,160 Tuesdays. If you're looking for a juniper-based scent, you could look at Juniper Sling by Van Halligans, um, Boy to Argent by uh, Dior is also powdery and herbal, much better performance than this. And this one is a crazy comparison, but the fragrance Les Joux Sans Fate by Joe Voy is meant to smell like an after-hour gambling den, and that has Angelica and and that has smoke and leather. So that's not as sweet as this one. It's very dry. Uh, it's a very different fragrance, but it's based on the same concept. And I think it's actually executed much better than this one. If someone were trying to talk you into buying this one, I think they would tell you that it's a nice scent. It's a crowd pleaser. It has a sublime opening. And some people are going to fall in love with Architects Club. If someone were trying to talk you out of buying this one, I think they would tell you that the scent doesn't develop. It has poor performance. And at $190, there are just better ways to spend that money. I'm still going to give Architects Club a 7 out of 10, which really speaks to how much I enjoy the way that this scent smells. I'm deducting points only for performance and price, and those go hand in hand for me. For the price, the performance needs to be better. But this is a beautiful presentation. It was a thought-out fragrance with some direction. I don't think the execution was spot on, but I like the ethos of our Keith, and I'm anxious to look at more work from them because this one really intrigued me off the bat. And as I said, if you're a vanilla fan, I think you you have to get your nose on Architects Club just to smell that vanilla surrounded by lemon and juniper berry. It's very unique in that regard. And one more thing, um, I read a, a few reviews on this Fragrantica and it really got slammed this fragrance as having a great opening and zero performance. So I do want to say that I disagree with that. The performance isn't beast mode and it's probably too soft for the price, but on my skin I get a good four to five hours out of this one before it uh, really tails off. Um, I think it's a vanilla fragrance well made for springtime and as I said I'm really anxious to explore more from Arquiste. So I hope you have enjoyed this review of Architects Club. We'll be back next week with more videos and of course another review. I am Maximilian.